welcome back to Get Off the Internet, the podcast where we journey through cyberspace and time. I am your host with the most, Nana Jane. I hope that you are doing well or as well as you can be. I know that social media is a pretty intense place at the moment, but while I think that intensity is very necessary, it can definitely take its toll. So I hope that this episode can serve as a digital resting place where your brain can kind of just change gears for a bit. I am extremely excited to kick off this first ever official episode of Get Off the Internet. And I truly could not have asked for a better conversation to have for this first episode or for a more perfect guest to have had that conversation with. And that guest is the one, the only, Nuatama Bodomo. Nuatama is a Ghanaian filmmaker and researcher. She is the founder of Mother Tongue, a studio exploring the mass contemporary relevance of Afro-Indigenous knowledge systems and histories. Nuatama grew up in Norway and Hong Kong before moving to New York City, where she acquired a bachelor's degree in film at Columbia University and a master of fine arts from NYU Tisch School. Her short films Bone Shaker and Afronauts both premiered at the Sundance Film Festival, while Everybody Dies premiered at South by Southwest. Nuatama also served as a staff writer and director on the award-winning HBO show Random Acts of Flyness, and her work is currently streaming on Netflix and on the Criterion channel. Nuatama also just so happens to be my big sister. (laughs) In this conversation, we chat about how Nuatama had this experience of growing up on the internet as someone who was born smack bang in the middle of the millennial generation and who has crystal clear memories of before and after the internet took over the world. And she has some priceless stories, so you'll want to stick around for that. We also discuss our 17-year long-distance sisterhood and the role that technology has played in that. We speak at length about the effect of streaming platforms on the film industry and about the writer's strike, which has not happened since 2008. Um, when the industry looked completely different and the writer's strike has since ended on the 27th of September after almost five months. We also talk about the birth of the iPhone and Instagram and how our brains have never been the same since. (laughs) Please be sure to follow Nuatama on her Instagram, which will be linked below And don't forget to subscribe, like, rate, and review the podcast. Without further ado, this is my conversation with Nuatama Bodoma. So today we're going to be talking about the internet. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Why are you laughing? I don't know. I feel like the internet is like, like, it could go in any direction. That's true, yeah. But I feel like that's something that all we millennials have in common are you and a millennial like, well okay so <laughs> so i'm a zillennial <laughs> that's someone that's like born on the cusp of like millennial and gen z mm. but yeah like some people see it as until 1996 okay so, like, so then in a way we're kind of on two yeah light off we're kind of on two different <laughs> ends yeah of like the same generation well, for me i'm like a middle millennial like i'm definitely i'm born like in the smack dab middle of the because the millennials okay. they i guess they start from 1980 and oh, go all okay, the way okay, to somebody okay. might say 1996 oh, okay okay yeah so then, that's 16 years i'm literally mm, 88 so oh, okay I'm in yeah the middle. so then you're in the middle and i'm yeah, like at the, the end, end. Yeah. yeah so first of all i'd like to hear what were your earliest memories of the internet okay so because i'm a millennial like a clear millennial Mm -hmm. and a middle millennial like smack them in the middle of the generation i have like a clear memory of before and after the internet okay so i have this super cute (laughs) yeah super cute first (laughs) memory so um so uh, yeah it's like we had just moved from ghana to hong kong i was Mm -hmm. 11 Mm -hmm. and at that time i was really into comic books Specifically, okay. Archie Comics. 
So um, I would always like get physical Archie comics from the store whenever we would go out with our parents and things. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I was reading one of my Archie comics and in the back it just said like, oh, you can go to www.archiecomics.com or something. (laughs) So I literally remember taking this comic book to daddy and being like, like our dad, (laughs) and being like, oh, daddy, Mm -hmm. (laughs) what is this? Can you take me to this? Wait, you said you're how old? 11. 11, Yeah. So, um, and this is like, I guess that would make it like 99, 99, okay, 2000, wow. around that time. Yeah. So I remember like literally him taking me to the computer. <laughs> okay. So we had a computer at that point. Yeah. We so had, we yeah. always, you know, actually before the internet, we always had one computer in our home. Mm-hmm. Like because our parents were in academia, even when we're in Ghana or Norway, we had one computer, even if it was like a really basic computer, it was like usually a Mac so like i know this is not the internet yet but your Mm. villa or or, you know our sister Mm. and me used to play like uh drawing games like in paint or like yeah the little games that came with um with the computer we used Mm. to have a long history of always being on the computer doing things like that and like you know just typing out stories like literally we would sit next to each other and type out stories on the That's computer so like pre-internet you oh know? was that the story where you said that i was like the lion oh the sheep. yeah yeah okay. i actually want to tell this story oh okay yeah, yeah. Like, sorry <laughs> so this is the we, we're starting at the the pre-internet computer mm-hmm. right like let me tell the story like um so pre-internet computer would literally open weird and mm-hmm. just or whatever mac equivalent and just type stories <laughs> this is so cute looking back knowing what the internet is now yeah but um me being the biggest sister i was always like hogging the computer and always typing my stories <laughs> and i was like always looking and then one day she was like I w-. she like fighting and advocating for herself like i want to type too like i want to type a story Aww, too good. so i finally got up and then like sat, she sat down and she wrote one story and she said once upon a time there was a lion and a sheep the lion ate the sheep. The end. <laughs> that was like her her masterpiece. That's a great story. I think it's a great story, yeah. you know? It's like straight to the point yeah. of what would happen if the lion and the sheep <laughs> were together. But anyway, so yeah. so at this point, going back to the Archie comics story. So I remember going to Daddy with my Archie comics and being like, oh, Daddy, what is this? I want to go to ArchieComics.com. Not knowing at all what it was. Yeah. And I literally remember the whole process. Like, he sat me down on the computer we we clicked whatever connection and you, oh yeah there was like this icon where it was like the phone and a signal going oh to God. the computer and that sound that was like wee-oh, 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 you know oh, the, the dial-up <laughs> the dial-up sound yeah. and then we got onto the internet and he typed it and i, I just saw like archie comics online <laughs> yeah <laughs> now i don't ever remember going back to that website but because mm-hmm. that he put me on online he gave me a hotmail account so Whoa. that was my my introduction wow. to the internet Amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so like so how did it go from there like like when did you really start using it and like that time everything was coming all the technology was coming so fast okay so i can't really tell you like a to b but one thing i'll say is like two things definitely happened one was the explosion of msn messenger oh <laughs> <laughs> yes okay yeah. like like but we were like the first like i remember being in like middle school like it's like yeah eight or so mm. and like it was like the first people i mean i think there was actually a technology called icq at that time that more like because we lived in hong kong so there's a technology that called icq that more like chinese people used really like okay. local chinese people mm. but i never used icq but it was always in the like it would always it would always come up in conversation mm. and these like icq like shortcuts would come up like eight eight meant haha or like luck oh, or something okay. yeah wow. but i never used That's icq so, cool. so i yeah. yeah but but i feel like msn messenger yeah, was like yeah. actually ripping off icq oh okay you know? <laughs> but we were kind of in the in the microsoft ecosystem at that point so mm-hmm. we got it through msn messenger and i remember oh okay so so msn stood for yeah M- microsoft Something. Microsoft something. I don't know what something. it stood for, but it was it was okay, Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was like in the Microsoft ecosystem. Okay. But I remember like at that point, so at that at this point I'm like thirteen. 
we would like go over to our friends' houses after school, mm. and we would like all sit around the computer and just be typing to other people in our class. <laughs> and I remember like yeah, just typing little messages. And I remember like um, once there's this girl. Her name is Dominique. She's a Canadian, the person who was in our international school. Mm. And I remember we we're like at somebody's house typing, and then Dominique just sat back and she was like, "Wow, oh <laughs> yeah." <laughs> Because it was like real, just like the That's ability so to, to, it was yeah. just like, you know. Um, and then what else do I remember from the early days? Yeah, I remember like after 9 11, which was also when I was 13, mm-hmm. you would, we would go online to play all these games that were quite anti right. anti Arab, anti Osama so bin Laden, yeah. anti this. And it was just like all these like, you know, shoot Osama bin Laden or like find him in the in the caves, and it's funny because that was what was like free and available online. It's so wild that that was okay. And yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah, but just like all these joke websites. I don't know. Right. There's other things I could remember if you ask more questions. But yeah, let me just, yeah, let's just see. Okay, yeah. Like when I look back, I feel like social media was kind of like harmful to me. Mm. Like like as a teenager, just like in terms mm. of like comparison and everything. But but I'd be interested to hear since you were using it kind of in the earlier days, yeah. like the impact that it had, and also which like social media. Okay, yeah. you know, oh man, you're really this is you're great because you're really taking it back. Yeah. Like as a teenager, we didn't have social media. Because okay, to talk about this, I'll talk about what I used as a teenager after I talk about social media. Okay, like I, I guess we had like, um, so you know, f- this is how in the beginning of it all I've been, mm-hmm. which is that like. Uh, when with Facebook, so Facebook mm-hmm. when it first started was about like college campuses, being able to like within one college campus see who was on your campus. Mm-hmm. Like it was more like the yearbook you get when you when you okay sorry in in America, okay, when yeah. which I went to I ended up going to university in America, mm-hmm. but like in America when you start your school year they give you a kind of yearbook they call, maybe they call it a facebook but they, they call it a yearbook type mm. thing where it's a picture of everybody who's in your year and their name Ooh, okay. so you could like it used to be a physical book that you would get at the beginning of the year so like if you met people or something you can just look through and see who they were mm-hmm. um so it was first facebook was first built as an online version of that Okay, you know, yeah. meaning that you needed to have a university email. Oh wow! To get Facebook, <laughs> and so I remember when I first got into university and I got my like because I went to Columbia University in New York. So when I got my Columbia email, that was the first things I did. I was like, You're oh, like, let finally. me get onto Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so and soon, I think that same year, even soon thereafter, like it like opened up beyond universities like okay like i think it was it, it didn't immediately like i think it was like maybe universities and workspaces like each it was like enclosed within like oh maybe you work for this place and that's your facebook mm. you would go to the school and that's your facebook you know oh, okay. and then now it's like so it was like separate platforms it was all the same platform okay. but you had only gained access to it through having like an institutional mm email Ooh, okay. and of course you would have access within your institution more wow you know so it was more <laughs> like so it was so academic and now yeah. it's like the whole world <laughs> for moms and dads uh, yeah and, for and, moms and, and dads world, yeah. yeah but yeah. but so as a teenager this is one of my favorite memories from the internet actually is so we used to have more like blogs okay so like wordpress yes. and zanga zanga, zanga. <laughs> Zanga was my jam. Zanga.com <laughs> slash funky underscore fire. Hey, I wonder if it's funky. Cool. I always, it, no, you can't see it, but okay. yeah, you can't see it. Zanga underscore slash funky underscore fire. That was me. And it's like, this is like, yeah, blog, online. I was, this was my jam. Wow. To this day, I feel like my best internet error is With blogging Zanga. on Zanga. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I also feel like my best was Tumblr, which was oh, also like Tumblr, more of a oh, blog platform. Tumblr yeah. was also like my e- my equal best actually, yeah. but Tumblr was more like I was like reblogging mm. and like reposting other people's things. Okay, I wasn't but- like as like creative of my own self on Tumblr. Okay, so Zanga yeah. was like only your own content. Yeah, like oh, it was. Okay. It wasn't. You were not. Cool. Blog- I mean, you, I guess you could quote people, but the culture wasn't to quote people. Mm. It was like you know. Today this happened in school. That is, oh my god! Oh, that's like, cool. and it was like we would all read each other's zangas and reference them. Or somebody would like say something emo in their zanga, and then the next day we would like find them in school. Like, <laughs> it's a you know? Yeah. Um, so. it, yeah. I never used zanga, but I, I always remember like you know peering at the screen when you guys were using it, and it looked very creative. There were a lot of gifs and like sparkly. Well, you you would spend a lot of time like 
getting your wallpaper. Mm. Oh, I'm also suddenly remembering how much we used MySpace. Yes. Yeah, MySpace yeah. was like a. Th- I, I wasn't like- as into MySpace, okay. but people were into MySpace, especially people who were like more like music focused. Okay. Like yeah. sharing music um, and talking about music. Yeah, like and MySpace. I think like a lot of musicians got famous from MySpace. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then I have to remember my 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 one of my biggest uh, <laughs> was like the Yahoo groups. Wait, what? Yahoo. I, I've groups. never. Heard so when of I was this. fourteen, this is now two thousand two. Yeah. Um. This is like when the first Harry Potter movies came out. Okay. I was biggest crush on uh, Ron Weasley. What's his name? Rupert <laughs> Grint. So I created a Yahoo group called Rupert Grint in the House. I think I remember that. Yeah, and mind you, it was like capital R, small U, capital P, oh, small no. E. Oh no. Grint in the oh, House. No. <laughs> you know, and actually, like, maybe like. Five years ago, I actually went back to look at Rupert Grint in the house. It has 600 plus mem- members still. Really? Yeah, it still has 600 plus hey. members. And I, in, the, in, the, in the description, I said, a hub to talk about our favorite cutie, Rupert Grint. This is so funny. I have yeah, to say it's so, so embarrassing. embarrassing. <laughs> okay. Anyway. But then, yeah, like in, in terms of like the comparison and, and mm. stuff, do you feel like, it, like that was there or the comparison on like, social media like yeah comparing yourself uh, to I your feel like, on social media so remember that i mean it wasn't as much of a panopticon back then because mm-hmm. the links of like when you talk about social media now like instagram facebook the links and ways in which you can you can show your life Mm -hmm. like even with stories reels all this stuff right Mm -hmm. and and just so many so i don't feel like when we were blogging we were just getting like a snippet of somebody's life that they chose to show you but it was also like written more like people would send send pictures and stuff Okay. But it wasn't really the same culture of social media. So I wouldn't mm. say that there was no comparison, but I wouldn't say that it was more comparison on social media than the typical being in high school. Right, yeah. Um, like, I actually remember when social media, be- media became this specific social media for me, but um, we can yeah. talk about that later. But I will say, like, remember that for me, by the time I'm getting social... I, my space was social media, but I think we're talking like Facebook, Instagram snapchat more like those ones right Mm -hmm. like that at that point i'm already in in university and i feel like in university we were more using facebook to like uh stalk crushes and help (laughs) friends stalk crushes i would that's more what i remember and you have to remember that this era people were not so good at using facebook like i remember that you know you would you know like interested in mm-hmm. and it says men or women mm-hmm. for a while everybody was bisexual on facebook yeah <laughs> i remember that <laughs> because yeah. it was like people just didn't know how to like select it or like people thought it meant like interested in men like, and women just for friends, friends you know yeah. so like i, don't, so I feel innocent. like there's other like i can definitely remember the shift for me in terms of like being more plugged in but you also have to remember at these stages of my life because now when i started college the iphone hadn't come out yet Wow. Right? Yeah. So at this stage of my life, I had phones, but they were not smartphones. They were smart for that time, mm-hmm. but they were not smartphones like today, where it's like so visual and you're carrying it in your phone and everything. Yeah. So I would almost say and that... you're recording high <laughs> No, exactly. <laughs> exactly, you see. But I would say that the comparison of real life mm-hmm. was more than the comparison okay. on social media for me. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that sounds kind of wholesome. No. Well, compared, I mean, yeah. to, compared to now. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so you've talked a bit about, like, how it was using social media with your friends. Mm. And for for me and you, it's like, when you think about it, we've actually been in, like, a long-distance sistership since, yeah. like, 2006. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which is kind of crazy to think about. Yeah. So, like, like, how do you think the internet has impacted our relationship as yeah. sisters like i remember us i don't know can't remember quite the platform but it must have been either it was like facebook messenger or mm-hmm. ms it couldn't have been msn messenger because i very soon got into the apple ecosystem like my okay. first my first personal laptop was when i was 16 so 2004 mm-hmm. and by then i was an apple so i don't know if it was msn messenger it might have been like facebook messenger but okay, i remember so- having a few and so I feel like the first was actually email, like like Hotmail. That we connected on? Yeah, like... 
like we used to email each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like we used to like, yeah. send each other emails. But I, I, yeah. I kind of have more memory for yeah. We used to send each other emails, but I have mm-hmm. more memory for like even just like having chats. Okay. So it must have been MSN. I'm trying to remember. Oh, sorry, it must have been Facebook Messenger. Wow. Okay. You know? Yeah, Facebook. Uh, yeah, it makes the most sense. Unless did Apple have like a an internal messaging system? I don't really. Feel I mean, there was. I don't know if iMessage was there back then, but but I didn't have any, like, Mac. Yeah. Um, So I feel like we had some, like, heart-to-hearts in chat form early on. Like, at this point, I feel like you were, like, 12. It was Facebook. Yeah. I can't remember. Okay, yeah. But but I don't know. I think that uh, still our relationship was more, like, phone or Mm. when I came home for the holidays. Okay. You know, like in, in terms of our communication, mm-hmm. right? Like, I don't know that we were like, so, cause I wasn't on social media like that, you mm-hmm. know? So like we, we were connected on Facebook and stuff, mm-hmm. but other than like chats, maybe emails, but not that often actually. Okay. I think that we mostly, you mo- I mostly communicated with you when I called home. Yeah. How did you call actually? Was, that, remember, was that through like, an but, app? or something mm, let me think at first i remember actually buying call cards okay like at first i remember actually buying call cards and calling mm. from my phone okay because i i got my first like smart smartphone like an iphone in 2012 okay yeah so that was quite late compared to other wow, people yeah and also i got my first mobile phone at 15 in 2003 okay so, <laughs> wow you really I remember, remember oh i remember it ha! at that point everybody had it yeah i think i was nine when i yeah. got mine but it was like a brick phone yeah that was mine too but that was yeah. like the hip brick phone yeah so our, in terms of our long distance sisterhood like i feel mm. like um in more recent years it's been social media yeah right? and like, yeah, WhatsApp. like whatsapp we kept the big up the whatsApp, yeah, you know it's just that insta yeah, exactly yeah, like, group, group, chat, chat, group yeah of memes and <laughs> for sure videos. but before that before that i would say that i still remember it being more like when i when calling home mm-hmm. and it's like you're talking to this you're talking to this oh, you're talking okay, to you one by one. One. <laughs> and then or when i would come home because you know at that time too i would come home more frequently i was coming home like That's at least true, once a year yeah. and, and being able to like hang for like a month, maybe two, three months, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's so, like you know. So, um, but I don't know that before the WhatsApp era, we had like a very consistent online. We're talking. Yeah, talking, I don't you think know? so. I actually went back to try and find some of our old conversations. Oh, really? On email, but okay, all I found <laughs> on Hotmail was yeah on Hotmail. All I found was me saying, "Hey, Nunu, plus P L Z." Send me the care story. I don't know what that is. Oh, my God. (laughs) And you responded, (laughs) if you call me Nunu, I will call you Contessa too. I have no idea what that means. I have no idea what that means. And and, and that was on 25th March, 2007. Wow. And then the other one I found (laughs) was, this was on 9th February, 2008. (laughs) I said, happy 20th birthday. Here's a haiku. Happy birthday, sis. You are 20 years old. Now you can act bold. Smile. XOXO Nan X with my email signature. And you just responded back. But do you, <laughs> do you know what that means? So, like, bitch? Yeah, that was how we used to joke. We'd be like, bitch. That's how you responded to my haiku. <laughs> but, <laughs> we used to joke with each other like that. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to know what the care story is. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> These are screenshots, so you actually found the email. I found the email. Oh, I you should open shot. it. Okay. <laughs> I, I can open it. But later. But yeah. Speaking of our childhood, yeah, and as you said, you used to come home quite often. And each time you would bring like a different CD that you rented from. I like don't, a DVD? Um, yeah. Wait. Yeah. DVDs were the CDs, right? Oh my god, are you serious? <laughs> like, are you serious? Maybe an emergency. <laughs> are you serious? No, like, okay, okay, sorry. Like, movies on Okay, a CD okay, type yeah. Is... Movies on CDs were DVDs. Yes. No, I mean, sorry. I mean, there I, were I, sometimes I, VCDs, but yeah. Ha, this is crazy to oh me. God, okay, I'm not even gonna ask what a VCD is. Okay. What? So, like, yeah, like, obviously, we went from, like, from, like, VCRs, that was, like, the big tape. So like the CDs, the discs. I mean, I mean the DVDs to like 
to like streaming Are you platforms. Being serious right now. <laughs> no, like you're really making me no, question but, but, reality. But, but, but you know, I was like, I know. Yeah. But you're making me question reality right now. I feel like DVDs were had a reign for so long. No, no, it, it's true. Like now that we're saying it, I remember. But like I remembered it as CD. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe forgive I'm like legit me, shocked right me. now. Oh, you're forgiving, but I'm I'm like legit shocked right now. Okay. Like not even kidding, shocked. Okay, okay, but anyway, okay, yeah, it was okay. okay. So if you, you want, do you want the yes? The, there was low down. There's like v, VHS, and in mm-hmm. America, I feel like they even had like something called Betamax. There were there were some like forgotten technologies in the in the middle there. Mini DVs had a thing too. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was more like if you're recording yourself, okay, like camcorder yeah. type thing. Then the VCD. Mm. Was the like precursor to the DVD, except for you couldn't fit one whole movie on DVD, one of the discs. CD, okay. It was, I think, it was like a, a video CD, literally okay. a video compact disc. Okay. So, but but the problem with them is that you couldn't fit. I think they could only had seven hundred megabytes on each side, and the movie was usually like one point five gigs. Mm. So you have to put. So it would be like you would get. You would get like the DVD, the movie on two discs, mm-hmm. and so it's like the movie would play and be like. Da, 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 change the disc mm-hmm. and then it's like you change the disc for part two you so you'd have oh, to do that i remember uh-huh. that yes i remember that like in hong yeah. kong it reigns supreme because it's like a really <laughs> cheap way to like m- both sell movies wow. but uh pirate movies wow, wow, wow. you know <laughs> like vcds usually started with this like huge movie uh, like psa that was like don't pirate movies you wouldn't <laughs> steal a handbag you wouldn't you wouldn't steal- download bread yeah exactly <laughs> Uh huh. And then came the DVD, which yeah. still and then and then even after DVD was Blu-ray, but the DVD and the Blu-ray they kind of reigned supreme because very high picture Blu-ray, quality. Okay. Yeah. That was like a, that was like after DVD. Oh, okay. I feel like Blu-ray had a, was short lived yeah, because it was very soon that after people were just like watching online, online or like downloading yeah. on computers. Yeah. But oh, you're making me remember another layer of the early internet, which was LimeWire and Napster. Oh my God. Huh, that was but, but, but that was only for music, right? LimeWire and Napster. I mean, oh. you could download other what is things. Napster, I don't know. Napster actually came before LimeWire. Like oh. Napster is the OG, and I feel like they were the most sued. Mm-hmm. Maybe I don't know if Napster literally came before LimeWire, but Napster had its moment before LimeWire had its moment. Okay. And Napster, I think that because they were the first like pirating hub, mm. they were sued or like iced out. Okay. okay. And focused on. Yeah. And then kind of like LimeWire oh. had its moment too, you know. Wow. I remember LimeWire. Oh, Wire. downloading everything. I mean, I used wow. to buy a lot of CDs. Like I loved going to HMV and buying CDs and literally listening yeah, to I, them. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and yeah. then we also had that store. Uh, in in our mall in in South Horizons, Marina. we had that store. That store. Yeah, I can't remember that one. Yeah, actually, actually, that was a huge era. Wow, the internet yeah. changed a lot. Yeah, so that, that was when the music industry was trying to figure out how to like not lose sales because mm-hmm. of the internet. And so what they would do is they would, they had all these gimmicks. One, it's like you could when you bought your your CD, you could upload it to one computer, but you couldn't do it again. Like they would oh, have, yeah, yeah I remember blockages. that. Or, or like, yeah, they'd have like a number of times that you, that you could, could upload yeah. it. And then another thing is like, I remember you would get C- you would get um, CDs with hidden tracks. Mm-hmm. So you would go to to song number one in your Walkman or Discman, and you would rewind from song number one, and then you would get the That's like so cool. the song. And it was like these things they were doing to make wow. you like buy the actual media. Yeah, like how do you feel about that whole transition from you know like. The VCR to the to like for movies for, to to streaming like yeah you know like like so much has happened you yeah. know yeah it's been such a slow uh, for movies specifically or any media for for any media but okay. but more specifically for movies okay. since you know I kind of want to talk about the movies but maybe a little bit about the music sure, as well that's but fine. like the the movies the movies I feel like it happens so slowly and evolves. Uh, so it just felt like the natural order of things, mm. you know, like, I don't really feel like I'm like, oh, we, you know, mm. I don't feel nostalgic, okay, let me say. Yeah. Um, I will say that there's some, there's some cultural things that used to happen when there was like physical discs that I do mm. miss. Like, for example, you said I would come home every year and I would yeah. bring a disc and we would watch as a family yeah. this movie. Yeah. And that was like a, hu- a really nice way I was able to share what I do or mm. like my interest 
with the family yeah you know and it's not the same to be like here's just a movie on netflix that we all have and have access to and let's just put it on i mean it's still nice but <laughs> no of course yeah. but it's just not the, not the same, same thing. as like here's yeah. a present and like and, we'd be so excited oh which movie <laughs> did you bring this time and like i remember like in new york at that time there was like a uh so there was like obviously like blockbuster i mean blockbuster i think was already on its way out oh Wow. What? I'm just now remembering Blockbuster. Blockbuster, yes, it does. It does. Yeah. Like, we would go every Friday and, and like, get them like a thing, like a movie, you know? Yeah. But also, you know, like uh, one thing with Blockbuster and kind of like a step in my journey to becoming a filmmaker is like, um, yeah, there was Blockbusters in like 2003. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like a dying shop. Mm-hmm. And at that time, 2003 was the year that there was the SARS outbreak in Hong Kong. Right. So I remember there was a period where either we weren't in school or it was like exam time. Like we weren't, there was no school. Mm. At that time, I passed the time of just going to Blockbusters basically every day. Wow. And like renting a new movie. And that's when I first got into like watching oh, movies, really? you know? Maybe not the first, first time, but it, it kind of like, yeah, like it intensified. It. Yeah. yeah. So Blockbusters and like renting and going back was like a huge thing. When I got to New York, there was Kim's, which was more like the indie classical cinema version Ooh. of that. You had Kim's video. So, it was nice to, like, yeah, go into a shop, look through the aisles. It kind of has this, like, very, like, you know, artistic, you're really choosing a movie. You're, mm-hmm. like, learning about other movies as you're going to this movie. It's not the same to browse on Netflix, right? Mm-hmm. And then also, you remember that at that time, Netflix wasn't all streaming, or, or streaming at all. It was, like, you would sign up for Netflix, pay a monthly fee rent and create a list they would send you the first dvd on your list you would keep it for as long as you wanted and then when you're done you would mail it back and then you get the next dvd on your list wow. you know so all these things we were doing i feel like uh, yeah i don't miss i don't i, don't, I think streaming is is good for cinema mm-hmm. in the se- well streaming is not <laughs> in terms of the audience experience let me say i think streaming is good i like that people have mm-hmm. access I mean, sometimes people are like, do you realize that you have, in your hand you have access to all of cinematic history? And so crazy. like now when you're releasing a film, you're not just against the other movies being released at this time. <laughs> you're against all, all of cinematic the movies history. of all time yeah. ever. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I, 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 for me, I'm not like... I, for me, you know, my goals are maybe a bit different. Like we can talk about profit and yeah. making profit. We can also talk about the fact that... But that's not real as a... a filmmaker myself it's not really my main concern right now because what we really have to do is undo what is becoming like a very like like monopolistic or very like very few people um like streaming uh industry Mm -hmm. so meaning that because we now stream there's like maybe four or five streaming platforms right that now have centralized all the power (laughs) And if you're going to make movies, it's just to get to these five platforms. And these five platforms even go beyond the film industry. Like, they're Amazon. Amazon is not just a film industry, right? A a film company. It's just a company that has a film wing as a throwaway thing, basically. (laughs) And so, like, these people now heavily control the film industry and control what what gets produced and control what is interesting to be produced and what is valuable to be produced. So that's the biggest thing to fight, honestly. Because the whole world is being now pushed into, like, what a Netflix or an Amazon or Disney Plus or or a Paramount Plus will want, you know? Yeah. And even that's why the studios themselves are, like, vertically integrating so that they just, like, produce their own movies and then present their own movies on their streaming platforms. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how the film industry was in the very beginning. The, all the theaters were owned by studios, so it's just, like... Okay. The studio would make the film, distribute it to its own cinema, and then make the money from right. the box office yeah, yeah then you kind of had like a more like diversifying of things independent cinemas uh underground cinemas like you know yeah um and that became these big cultures like a lot of the directors we now know and love they didn't come from studio systems like some one example because he blew up on in, on memes or virally it was like wes anderson mm. you know not not saying he's like a filmmaker i adore but like his name went viral again because of this like whole Wes because Anderson yeah. meme thing that's going on. He is somebody who's his first film, Bottle Rocket, is like a small indie film, mm-hmm. you know. But so now that wouldn't have made it onto the, the not, streaming platform. It yeah. wouldn't even have been made, you yeah. know. Like that's the thing, because now you know, uh, yeah, this is like a whole other thing. But like, I guess what I'm saying is like streaming on it on its own own. I don't mind because I think internet makes 
the media more accessible Mm -hmm. and like when i think about accessibility i'm more concerned with like basically like viewers outside of like the set the mainstream and by that by that i mean like especially in the african context right right? yeah like people have access to the internet through phones but not through laptops they don't even have maybe the enough data to be watching movies streaming at this level right so like is netflix amazon and all these things that are becoming the industry standard like are they really doing anything for these people Who is it catering to yeah yeah and so I almost feel like if there were like alt, uh, like alt, like um, alt streaming platforms or spaces, mm. I'm also somebody who I know it's like maybe detrimental for my industry, but it's like I'm not against like pirating and sharing movies outside of like watching okay. them in these clean ways, because I really? do th- because I yeah I do think that like you know movies should be watched and movies should be watched outside of what i think that people should pay for movies if they can but there's like a lot of people who can't pay for movies like even how much does netflix cost a month 10 10 dollars a month 13 yeah, dollars a month like um how many people in the world are gonna afford that so for the people that don't afford can't afford that i actually am for just having pirating, access to it yeah. you know we don't have to call it even pirating just having access to it you know but um and also i just think that the streaming systems are so large that the people that pirate they do make a chunk but i don't think they make enough of a chunk Mm. because streaming has become so the new system Mm -hmm. that like getting paying ten dollars and getting access to all of cinematic history is like kind of like getting movies for free that's true though. you know yeah so i don't know like it's not to say i love pirating everybody should pirate Mm. it's because i know that like obviously if nobody was paying for these things but then you would find new ways like musicians actually now make more of their money from touring you know okay. like sometimes you walk away from the old model which was like we sell these cds and then we make the money mm. and you create new models and i'm for the innovations like that okay. i'm for the innovations like i said i'm not nostalgic about the dvds or anything mm-hmm. i'm for the innovations but we just have to be careful because a lot of the innovations right now are just moving towards centralizing power in the hands of five corporations you that's know? true yeah um, and that system doesn't work because th- it really affects the stories that get told mm. and you know in this day and age there's so much lip service about diversity and da 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 and this is black now and that's black now it's not progress <laughs> it's not progress because only five stories get told so and yeah true. maybe you're maybe you'll make the person black now but it's still kind of the, the same story as yesterday yeah like we watched the little mermaid we love the mm. little mermaid like I, you know like we love the little yeah mermaid. as children you know but at the end of the day halle berry ha- halle berry oh my god halle berry. i know <laughs> the names are just halle yeah uh, at the end of the day halle <laughs> bailey is black and that's maybe being lauded as an innovation mm-hmm. but it's still the little mermaid a franchise by disney that goes money goes back to disney disney just recl- you know like yeah. th- nobody making new content again mm. it's another issue nobody making any new content uh, and everything goes back to like where the money was already. Yeah. So Halle, Halle Bailey being black, as much as I like the movie, Halle Bailey being black doesn't actually innovate anything in the system. It actually just perpetuates the same thing That's and true. gives it a new yeah. face and gives it new, va- new validity because they cast a black person. Yeah. Anyway, this could be a long conversation. It, yeah, so really. Yeah. yeah, so... <laughs> um, yeah, so how about, you know, these, these streaming platforms they're you know taking money away from the writer so yeah it kind of connects to what i was just saying about like everything is th- innovations are happening but the the power is being centralized within like five different companies mm-hmm. so what's happening with the writer's strike right now with the wga is very important because i think the last writer's strike was 15 years ago so at that point look what the industry must have looked 15 years ago is how how like 2008 yeah. right so the industry looked completely, completely different, different back then. Yeah. And since then, streaming has become a new paradigm. But, you know, a lot of writers actually are able to sustain their lives through what we call residuals, which is like royalties. Mm-hmm. And it's like the royalties are tied to more like TV, for example, you know, and TV reruns. But people aren't necessarily watching these, like, let's say the show Friends. Mm-hmm. The writers of Friends that might get money every time Friends is rerun on TV. That's a lot of money in an era where everybody's watching Friends on TV. But if Friends is now on Netflix and everybody's watching it on Netflix and you haven't changed it, then you haven't changed the system so that writers get residuals from streaming, you see? So I think the writer's strike right now is very necessary. Um, It's really talking about what it means to like have a livelihood as a writer in these industries that there's so much money involved in. Mm and yeah, you just have the, the, the labor, like the labor strike has to happen 
so that you can change the system to meet the new moment. Right. So that's all that's happening. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, the AMPTP, which is like the producers group, can like fight what's happening because it looks like less money for them. But they just, just can never win this battle because at the end of the day, who creates your content? Yeah. the writers yeah and so you're always going to rely on them and the sort of one thing the wga has been really i'm a member of that union as well as the directors guild of america okay this is like the writers guild of america and directors guild of america i'm a, direct, a member of both unions and so one thing the wga has been really good about is kind of showing you the numbers which is like oh um for example for amazon the number that they're asking of their revenue to pay all the writers is 0.006 percent <laughs> of their revenue you know what i mean and even for netflix it's like 0. 0.2 you know like i'm not you know like it's just like out of 100 percent, it's like less than yeah. less than one percent you know yeah. and this and this is not for anybody this is not for for people who just are scabbing your your money or like trying to steal from you or like bleeding you, you of your money yeah it's like the originators of your who content created the story if they don't do your well, work you have literally you no exist. business yeah you know so they can't win but you know labor strikes are very important and the yeah. time it takes to like redefine what the industry is very important yeah 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 definitely. yeah yeah. It, yeah but i think it is still beautiful that for example, as we said, we went to watch a movie in the cinema yeah. that, like, people do still, like, patronize and respect, like, you know, the cinema and the film industry in yeah. that way. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, for me, ideally, you would just see it as different experiences. Okay. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, you could watch a little moment on, with your, in your family home with your people while you're eating dinner. And that's, like, a nice experience. Mm. But the, to me, also before this, I went to a, I was part of a film festival in New York and I just got back to Ghana. Mm -hmm. So it was my first time, actually, because I'd been in Ghana for a long time, being in a cinema and, like, watching movies beginning to end, big sound and everything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, you just can't replicate this experience. It's true. So, yeah, maybe not everybody's going to spend $17 to go see a movie. Yeah. Um, but there's always going to come a moment where you want that experience and you're going to go in the same way that, like, yeah, Beyonce is probably not going to make a lot of money from Renaissance by people who physically buy CDs or even vinyl. But the Renaissance tour is an experience mm. and you really can't replicate that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you could, you know, I, I don't think I paid for Renaissance. I think I just listened to it on YouTube or something, you know? Mm. But like the money is going to be like getting the Beyonce experience, yeah, you know? Yeah, true, yeah. In terms of the internet and cinema, one thing that has really shifted in the recent years because of COVID mm -hmm. is that now you can do like a lot of post-production online. So you okay. can be like, so like, you know, like uh, it's editing software where it's Adobe Premiere. Mm -hmm. um, you can now do like Adobe projects and Adobe teams. So it's like, is that new? Something? Oh, no, no, no. That's oh, old okay, software, okay. but it's just more highly used now oh, because okay, okay. I'm sitting on this computer. You're sitting on another computer. Right. Now. Everybody's working remote is what okay, I'm trying to say. Yeah. So you get these things like these newer platforms like Frame.io okay. where somebody, so with Frame.io, like I, I worked on a TV show last year mm -hmm. and so I edited or was part of the post-production in I was part of the post-production for that remotely. Mm -hmm. So the editor would have a cut and send me a Frame.io link. So I would get onto Frame.io. Every time I had a note as a director, I would pause and I would be able to give a comment right at that moment. Oh, you know? so great. Yeah. Um, and then like with Adobe Projects, it's like a Premiere Projects, it's like somebody can edit and then put their timeline to the Projects mm. folder and then I will get that updated timeline on my computer. Wow. So it's like, this has become really so interesting. It's, it's kind of like Google Docs, but like for films and like yeah. very advanced. Yeah. There's things called Team Viewer where you can even be like seeing how somebody's editing or how somebody's structuring wow. your drive <laughs> on the other side. So it's just like really strong mm. right now. I really love remote work of, for, for post-production because it's like, the truth is we just live in different places and you can work with people in different places. Yeah. Like for the longest time I lived in New York because filmmakers lived in New York or LA because that's where you had to be to be around people who were skilled mm. to work with you. But I love that, you know, as a Ghanaian who wants to be in Ghana, mm -hmm. I can be in Ghana and working in, with people in New York. I can be in Ghana and working with people all over the world, you know? Mm. That re I think really love, like really betters everything. Mm -hmm. obviously zoom and like sharing screens for like pre-production when you're like have scripts that you're sharing and you want to be reading at the same time right. like you know you can do so much um 
but then obviously because I'm a filmmaker, the best thing is that you also have set and set is in person. Right, so there is yeah, like you in can person. do an online set. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure somebody has, but like. You know, because people like Alfred Hitchcock, they wouldn't even, like, show up to set after they gave their instructions. Really? Yeah, some of his most iconic Whoa. scenes. He drew the storyboard, gave it to the AD, and the AD what? was like, yep. I don't know you how know? I feel about that. I don't know. But I'm just, it's just to say that people are different and have different things they value yeah. as directors. But for me, like, I just love that most of the system can be remote, but then you have this beautiful moment that's set, and that's, like, you come together. Mm. You know, you really are a group. It's like adult camp. Yeah. And then you have, like, yeah, you make friendships, and yeah. then... But then you can, like, go back to where you're comfortable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because making movies is, like, hard work. And I just love the idea that because of the internet, you can get to this version of making movies where it can be something that flows with your life. Okay. Because, yeah, you have to go and be on set. That, that for me, in terms of what I prioritize, is important. Mm-hmm. But I love that I can flow with my life and be where I'm comfortable and still do my work as a director. Okay. So the internet offers that, you know. Yeah. Definitely. You know. One other um, transition that we didn't talk about for me was the transition to actual smartphone. So I said when I was okay. when I was twenty four, I guess two thousand twelve, I got my first iPhone. Okay. And that was like my first smartphone as oh. we know it today, you know. And I feel like my brain has never been the same in the <laughs> worst way possible. To be honest, yeah. <laughs> Like, I remember, I remember those early days and first getting on Instagram because I now had an iPhone. Because Instagram, I guess it was always... For, for a while, was Instagram only iPhone? I, yeah, it, it was yeah. only iPhone. I remember the first app I downloaded when I got an iPhone was Instagram. Exactly. So I was like, finally. Yeah, so I remember, yeah, also getting Instagram and getting on there and just for the first time feeling that feeling of my brain time just bleeding away Uh, just bleeding away you know like my brain time just bleeding away you know so i just feel like yeah and 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 i sometimes look back because i'm now in a time where i'm like i need a detox i need to like get away you know um there's many ways you try and mitigate that, but I feel like you're just never going to get away from the fact that there's so much research gone into how to like hook our attentions and bleed them away from it's us really on these platforms. Yeah. And so I think that you have to just accept that if you're opening this platform, you are going to bleed attention away and find ways to manage maybe the number of times you open it, but not like try and manage the, the fact that you will just be getting lost. Mm-hmm. You're diving into deep waters almost every time you open up the app, right? Like, you have to know that you're not... It's not like, oh, da 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 and I'm out. Because I also do this thing where I, like, have multiple Instagram accounts. Like, one more professional, one more personal. The professional one, I can easily, like, log out. But sometimes you have to log in to do something. So you have to know that, okay, once I log in, it's going to be, like, a moment. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> and then I'll come back up for air and get out as soon as I can. Mm. But I have these moments where I'm just, like... You just kind of, like get fed up with it and you're like ah and then you just like delete something yeah. or like exit it and like remove yourself from the account or something so yeah I, i'm definitely like just remembering my first time diving into smartphone land and having instagram and just le- watching my brain cells just like, like dissipate horrifying. and languish and to this day because you said 2012 that's like now 11 years ago I, you know, I have no solutions. It's just gotten worse, <laughs> you know. It's just gotten worse. It makes me want to cry. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, I, as with anything that's very big in life, the internet is incredibly great. And it's done so much for us. Because even our sisterhood, like, once we get into the WhatsApp era, it's the first time I feel like we're consistently in communication. That's true. Even though we're not always in the same place. Yeah. Right? And that's... You would never... I would never give that up. I would never give that away, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, but I also think every generation finds a way. Like, I remember that when we were kids, you know, we were Ghanaians living either in Norway or America or Hong, Hong Kong. Kong yeah. But especially in the 90s, our mothers, like a mom, mommy and then her sisters, would swap literal physical tapes. Tapes, Cassette yes. tapes. <laughs> like, you would get a cassette tape in the mail and you'd put it in and it's like, you just hear the person's voice. The you know? OG voice message. Yeah, so, yeah. oh, and that's another thing. So, WhatsApp era has so many parts, you know, like, I feel like the voice message that's era. That's true, yeah. Like, really... Really change, increased change what was possible mm-hmm. but not everybody likes voice messages yeah so i don't know like yeah the internet i don't know how we want to close out but yeah um yeah i, I have a few rapid fire questions yeah. so okay so you can just answer with the first thing that comes to mind the best thing that the internet gave me is global connection 
the, which is how my brain works okay does that make sense yeah the worst thing the internet gave me is loss of attention and time without the internet my life would be i can't imagine it <laughs> My ideal social media platform would be daily vlogging or blogging base. If there was one thing or message that I could upload to the collective unconscious of the world, what would it be? Wow. <laughs> um, hmm. I feel like there's so many okay. angles. Here, but let me try. Let me try. I think my first instinct has something to do with um, early archival videos. Okay. Ways of the uh, ways of showing that what feels ancient actually had a lot of innovation in it by showing like just videos from a time. Okay, you I mean like know. like people's childhood videos? Mm, or? It could be, but I just mean like okay. For what I'm thinking about specifically is just like the idea of Africa, for example, mm-hmm. of being like, permite, da, 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 da. but there's early archival videos from even the 1910s, the 1920s. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's complicated. It may not be my answer because these were usually taken by white people, colonizers who are like pointing at natives. Mm-hmm. But I feel like sometimes you see videos from like the independence era of Africa, like the various African countries. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, wow, actually we feel like we're so far ahead now. But actually, the world was actually quite f- forward back then. Okay. Does that make sense? So I feel like I would... I, and I, I like archival videos because I like the idea that you just get to see like more realistic depictions and whole full d- realistic depictions. Mm-hmm. Okay, my answer would be... It, could it be a bit speculative? Sure. I would, <laughs> I, would, I would upload early archival videos of all the worlds I want. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> they exist. I may not have the video, but in my in my alternate reality, there's people who are pointing cameras with loving gazes <laughs> mm. at our ancient cultures yeah. Yeah. and showing that actually we are like our cities were like amazing, mm. and there would be like weirdly cameras of that from a good perspective, and that would be available for everybody to understand. Strange, but that's my answer. No, it's a great answer. <laughs> Very abstract. <laughs> Earlier, Kevin, these are the worlds I want. <laughs> okay, would you like to promote any project that you're working on? Mother Tongue is a project I have right now, which is uh, my space to explore like the contemporary relevance of Afro Indigenous knowledge and culture and history. So, as I said with ancient worlds just now, I'm really interested in like. Um, from an African perspective, finding completely different ways to tell stories, completely different ways to like tell movies and mm-hmm. make movies. And I use technology and the internet a lot, actually, yeah. in thinking of that. So I don't know, if anything is interesting enough for you, then you can follow me at mothertongue.mp4. Okay. One on episode. Instagram. Okay. Which stole my attention. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You can also watch her... F- short film Afronauts on YouTube. That's true. YouTube, yeah. actually, that's a whole other conversation, YouTube. Anything you want to say no, on no, that? No, 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 okay, no, no, okay, no, no, okay. No, no. I, I, I just think that YouTube has matured into like a new era for itself that's mm-hmm. quite interesting. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I feel like some, for example, for some reason, YouTube created something like the makeup culture. There's all these like makeup gurus mm, that have been on YouTube for yeah. so long. And they, their pr- platforms have really evolved so now I can even just like watch like a 50 minute YouTube video, get ready with me makeup tutorial where somebody's just talking while they're doing their makeup. I love those. I know. <laughs> there was one, so there was one amazing one recent, not recently anymore, but Naima Tang talking about being a black girl and exploring therapy mm-hmm. and getting onto medication and understanding her mental illness and like her family traumas. Oh. And I was just like, wow, like this felt so evolve like it's so easy to roll your eyes on youtube but this was just such a beautiful experience to check it out and i just watched the whole video (laughs) you know (laughs) so i think youtube is like on its next level yeah you know Mm -hmm. like i love long videos and long experiences on youtube exactly long form (laughs) i love that youtube is long form content man but yeah Oh, yeah, I guess film is also... Yeah. yeah. I mean, content. some of us are OG filmmakers and are old, old filmmakers in the sense that we used to go to cinemas and watch, like, seven and a half hour movies. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. 
Satan Tango. It's like a, a movie, a Hungarian film. It's seven and a half hours. My, one of my favorites is a movie called Happy Hours, like five and a half hours. Um, and it's <laughs> and it's, it's a Japanese what am film. I hearing right now? No, like honestly, I'm not even joking. Like that is like my one of my favorite film experiences are like like you do it as a marathon you know you're going okay. in for it right but it's like you go with people sometimes you... you go with people like happy hour I went by myself but then when the lights came up and you look around and you see somebody you know you're like, you're like hey. hey I know you're like deep buddies you know wow so sometimes time go I went with people and it was like there was intermissions and shit you know? okay good yeah Grumpy, but but that's but... like that that was like that's actually my favorite way wow that's amazing like a long 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 yeah. form content yeah wow anyway Anyway. Thank you, All Nana. Right, no, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks thank for... you. F- okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for having me. This has been yeah. a wonderful conversation. Yeah. Just even getting to remember all mm-hmm. these little pockets of like the pre-internet into internet, mm-hmm. the pre-internet to like early internet yeah. into this like. It- because I, I, what I realized was that until the moment I got the smartphone at, in 2012, I, there was, like, such creative ways to be on the internet and such connected mm. ways and such, like, oh, I get to, like, have a, a, an institutional uh, email, so now I get Facebook and mm. da, 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 da. But I feel like 2012 just marked the decline for me. Not, not of the internet, because I talk about the COVID-era filmmaking, remote work kind of innovations, which yeah. I really love. But... You're just reminding me that there are so many like very joyful like it moments. Was exciting yeah. Before. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you for your time and for your insights and for being my big sis. Yay! <laughs> thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Get Off the Internet once again. Don't forget to follow Noatama on her Instagram link down below. And please also support this podcast by subscribing, liking, rating, reviewing, doing all the things on all the platforms. Let's continue this conversation down in the comments, or you can also send a DM on Instagram at Get Off the Net Podcast. And tell me, what do you miss the most about your pre internet brain? All right, see you next week.